Procreate is an iPad painting app that has thousands of great brushes online. But can these brushes be used with Affinity? Today, I'll show you how to load these brushes into Affinity programs and how to get the most out of them. So let's jump in. What's up, guys? It's Trent, and today we're talking about how to load Procreate brushes into Affinity products. I'll be showing you how to use two different types of brushes. First, we'll look at stamp brushes. These are brushes that really just make one solid image of something. They're really cool for putting pre-made graphics into your designs. Next, I'll show you how to work with more textured brushes. This is more what we think of as a regular brush, something that acts like a physical paintbrush that we'd use in the real world. So let's start by looking at the stamp brushes. So I'm here on Creative Fabrica, and by the way, if you search for Affinity Brushes, you will see results. So be sure to search for that also, just to see if there's something there that you like. They have tons of different options here for Affinity products also, so there's lots of brushes out there to choose from. But we're here to learn about how to load Procreate brushes, so I'll search for those. And by the way, I'll put a link in the description to all these brushes I'm looking at today. Now, if we scroll through, we can see there's different types of brushes. We have these stamp brushes here, which tend to be an image of something. And we have shading brushes and other types of paint brushes, which are good at giving textures to our images. So I found this Moon and Stars brush stamp set here. So let's download it. I'll click the download button. I'll save it to a location on my computer. Now, frequently when we download anything from Creative Fabric or almost any website, it's going to be a zip file initially. So I'll right click on it and I'll say extract all. This is on Windows. Extract. And what happens is you get a folder. So I'll go into that folder here. And you can see there's a file moonandstars.brush set. And the secret about the brush set file is it's actually just a zip file with a different name. So the cool thing is we can just rename it to .zip. I'll hit enter. Windows gives me a warning, but I'll just click yes. And now it's a zip file, so I'll extract it. And we get another folder here. So let's look inside there. Now once I expand that folder, you see there's all these other folders with all these random names. Basically, each of these folders is going to hold the image for a brush. So if I go into one of these folders, the file you actually care about is called shape.png. So let me open this in Affinity Photo. You can see here it looks like this moon. So this is the image for our brush. I'll close that. So I'll look in these other folders. I'll just click some random one. If I open this shape.png, you can see it's another image here. So I'm going to copy one of these shape PNGs to another directory and just rename it so it's easier. You don't have to do this, but I like to do it to make it more organized. I'll just paste it here. And I'll call it brush one. So now what I can do in Infinity Photo is I can load the brush. And you do that through the brushes studio here. If you don't see brushes somewhere over here, make sure you have it enabled. You can do that with window brushes. That's how you show that. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a category so I have my brushes organized. So I'll create a new category. And I'll say Procreate Brush. I just do that to keep things separate so I know where they are. So I'll go into these Procreate Brushes. Now what I'll do is I'll just actually create the brush based on that PNG I showed you before. So I'll click on the three lines here. And I'll say New Intensity Brush. And here's the PNG file I copied. You can see it's the moon. So I'll click Open. And we have a brush here. So let me create a new canvas, of course, so we can start painting. And I'll add a pixel layer to it. Now I can select my brush over here, Paint Brush Tool. And I'll make sure my brush is selected. And if I make it bigger, you can see that when I click, I make an image for my brush. I can resize it, paint again. So this is our brush stamp. And of course, I can click and drag if I like. It's kind of a cool effect. Maybe you don't want to do it often, but it's possible. But typically with the stamps, you just want to press once to get the image there. Let me rename this to our intensity brush here. I'll say Moon Intensity Brush. Now you may have wondered, why didn't we create an image brush? Well, let's do that and I'll show you what happens. I'll say New Image Brush. I'll select the same file again. Let's rename this to Image Brush. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of the background so you can see the effect here. I'll fill it with some type of sky blue. So if I use my Image Brush, watch what happens here. It's actually just literally using the image itself. Whereas the Intensity Brush is just using the black value, the white is transparent. And the really key thing about the Intensity Brush is whatever color you select here, it's going to use that instead of black. So I can make my moon orange, can make it yellow, can make it green. So that's the power of the Intensity Brush. Now, sometimes you certainly want an image brush. Maybe you literally just want to print your image onto the screen. But a lot of times you just want to use kind of the shape and have the freedom to change the color as you want. In which case, make sure to use the Intensity Brush. 
So just to do a quick review in case you didn't get all that, this is the file I downloaded from Creative Fabrica. It's the .zip file. I'll extract it. That gives me a folder. I open it up. So I get this brush set file. All I have to do is rename that to .zip. Accept the warning. And then if you extract that, you get a new folder. And all these folders in here have a file called shape PNG, which you can use for your brush image. And your brushes can be created with the menu over here using either intensity brush or image brush. Okay, now let's look at a texture brush. And the process to start is going to be pretty similar to what we saw for the stamp brushes. But I want to show you a couple extra brush settings that are really going to add some more life to your brush strokes. So I found this set here. And you can see if you click through it, there's some previews of the effects here. I like the way it looks, so I thought this would be a good one to download and try. So once again, I'll click download and I'll save it here. So we downloaded it as a zip file. Let's extract it again. Now I'll open the folder. It has another folder inside of it. Now you can see this one's structured a little bit differently, but it's basically the same. They give you some JPEGs here, which are really just example files to look at for reference. The file we still care about is this dot brush set here. That's the same as it was before. So we just rename it. I'll say dot zip. Hit enter. Yes. Let's extract it. And I'll go into the folder. And again, the structure is pretty similar to the other one. We have these random numbers. But if we go inside of it, if I open up the shape.png file, we can see a representation of our brush. So I'll close that. Once again, I'll just copy it to a higher level directory so it's a little easier to find. I'll paste it here. I'll just call it texture one. So in Infinity Photo, I can click these three lines again. And I'll say new intensity brush. And I'll open it here. I'll just rename it Texture Intensity Brush. Let's create a canvas. So with my brush selected, I'll select my Texture Intensity Brush here. Let's make my brush nice and big. And I'll paint something. And now you can see kind of an issue. Even if I change the color, this may be the opposite of what you expected. Let's look at that PNG file again. So I'll open this PNG file. So this goes to what I was saying earlier. The black part is going to be the solid part of our brush, and the white is going to be transparent. So we just want to invert this image. And there's a really easy way to do that in Affinity. We can just click the Adjustments down here. And I'll say Invert. And now we have it the way we want it. So I'll just save it. It's asking me if I want to save it flat as a PNG. Yes, I'll just do that. Now I'll go back here. I'll just delete my brush. And let's recreate it. So now with my brush selected, if I make a mark, you can see it's actually doing it the way we want it to. Now there are a couple things that don't quite look good about this brush right now. So if I click and drag across, you can see it looks kind of repetitive in a way. So let's look at some of the brush settings. What you can do is you can double click on your brush here. So this gives you a preview of what your brush looks like here. And you can see it's very repetitive. So what we could do is we can add a little bit of randomness to our brush. And that's done through the Dynamics tab. And it may look a little scary, all these options, but really it's just allowing us to add a little bit of random jitter to each of the settings for our brush if we want. So the one I like the most is rotation jitter. If you look at the preview, as I change the rotation jitter, you can see it's actually getting more random here. So I can set it to like 20% or something. That means it's just going to randomly rotate our brush image within 20% every time we make a mark. So if I close this, if I drag it across now, you can see it actually looks much more random. It gives it a much more natural feel here. Now, one thing you notice as you start to build up paint is that the area starts to look very solid and kind of monochromatic. So you can see the middle is starting to look solid orange there. One thing you can also do to add a little variety to your paint is add a hue jitter. So I could just bump this up just a little bit, maybe 5%. And what it's going to do is it's just randomly going to shift the color within 5% every time I put down marks. So if I keep painting here, you can see it gives it a little more interest here. We have orange, but we also have these subtle little yellows in there too. And we can do the same thing with saturation and luminosity here. So I'll choose blue as a color. It just looks a little more interesting. If you want to go really crazy, you can dial hue to 100%. So it's just going to be random colors all the time. And you have options of adjusting these other ones too. So if you see up here, you can see the preview of what they're going to do. So I encourage you to look at these dynamic settings and just kind of mess around with them a little bit. Because they're pretty fun to add some variance to your brushes. Now, something you may also want to do is use the paint mixer brush with your texture brushes. So the paint mixer brush is this brush over here. And what I can do is I can put down some blue color here. And if I choose another color like red, 
it actually starts to mix the paint in the middle here. So you see we're getting this purple. I just released a video on the paint mixer brush, so be sure to check out that video if you want to learn exactly how it works. Of course, if you have any questions on this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.